as we start chapter 10, we're going to be working with acids and bases. Now, initially, people hear the words acids and bases and they get all scared and they think it's all this really detailed chemistry stuff. Um, but in actuality, acids and bases are all around us in our everyday lives. Um, acids have a number of different characteristics, which I'm going to be listing on the board as we talk about it. And I want you to be sure that you know these characteristics. Um, today we're going to do acids and tomorrow we're going to do bases. So make sure that you know which characteristics go with which one. Okay, so when we start out, um, the first characteristic of acids that I'm going to mention is that acids tend to have a very sour taste to them. Now, this does not mean that you should go around tasting everything to determine if it's an acid or not. Uh, a lot of foods that we enjoy are acids. So for example, if you like vinegar and oil salad dressing, the vinegar that's in the salad dressing is an acid. That kind of sour taste, that tart taste, is because um, vinegar contains acetic acid. If you like citrus fruits, um, grapefruit, oranges, uh, if you like lemonade, that tart flavor comes from citric acid. If you like tomatoes, those have acids in them. Even milk is a little bit acidic. If you like the tartness of apples or blackberries or blueberries, all of those have malic acid in them. And so that, that pleasant tartness that we enjoy when we eat a nice crisp apple comes from an acid. Acids are found in nature all over the place too. Um, there's stomach acid that our creator has put there to help digest all of your food. And in fact, sometimes if you've ever, you know, been sick with a stomach bug and you've thrown up and you get that nasty sour taste in your mouth, it's because of the stomach acid that, that you've just regurgitated. Um, your muscles, if you've ever done a big workout and then your muscles get sore afterwards, it's because you have lactic acid that's built up in those muscles. Have you ever been stung by a bee? Um, those hurt because the bees um, have formic acid in the venom that they inject underneath your skin. And so that acid kind of stings when it, when it goes under your skin. So that sour taste, that, that tart taste, and then just all the other places where we find acids in nature show us that um, acids aren't just confined to the chemistry lab. They're all around us and very much a part of everything that we do. Another characteristic of acids is that they will react with metals. And when they do that, they actually form hydrogen gas for a reason that I will explain here to you in just a couple of minutes. Uh, I have given you um, links to several other videos as well to show you some of the things that I don't have the capability of showing you. And one of those is a, a reactivity with metals. And there's a, a gentleman who will actually show you that, you know, when you put a piece of metal into an acid, it reacts and it forms bubbles and it makes hydrogen gas. And so he can show you that. Um, another characteristic of acids is their conductivity. And basically what that means is that acids are going to conduct electricity if you put them in a solution that has water. Um, batteries are a prime example of something that conducts uh, electricity and our batteries are going to contain acid in them. Um, that's why uh, you, you're not ever supposed to break batteries open because the acid that's in them is very, very corrosive and would be very damaging to your skin. Okay, so if something conducts electricity, it um, could potentially be an acid. And I also have given you a video where um, somebody has actually made a battery out of lemons because I we just said earlier, lemons have citric acid in them and you can actually make, uh, make a battery uh, to run a, a little LED light out of lemons. So you can watch that, that's really cool. Another characteristic of acids is that they are proton donors. Now, what does that mean? Well, let's think back to when we talked about atoms. And you know that the proton is the positively charged piece in the center of the atom. Now, the other thing that we talked about is that if you specifically have um, an atom of hydrogen, we talked about how hydrogen has one proton in the, in the nucleus, and then it tends to have one electron roaming around outside in the electron cloud. 
Well, a lot of times what will happen is that that um, atom then will give up its electron to, to another, another atom, and so the electron is gone, and so that means if hydrogen gives up its electron, all that's left is a proton. So really what we're saying when we say that hydrogen is a proton donor is we're saying that it's, it's a hydrogen ion donor. So it's like an H plus donor. And the easiest way to recognize whether a chemical formula is that of an acid or not is that it starts out with an H. So if I have an HCl, this H is going to break off apart from the Cl and it's gonna get donated to something else. This, HC2H3O2, this is the formula for acetic acid, which is what you find in vinegar. And again, just like this H will break off and make a hydrogen ion and it'll leave behind a chloride ion. So what it does is it looks like this. The H plus breaks off and the chloride ion is left behind. The hydrogen gives its electron to the chlorine because remember the chlorine um, really wants that electron, so it will, it will break off and go over here, and the hydrogen is left with a positive charge here. Very much like the, the sodium chloride, when we talked about how sodium chloride dissolves in water, and you have all those positive and negative ions, and then they break off. The chlorine takes the extra electrons and the sodium um, goes without. This is the same type of thing that happens here. Hydrogen chloride is normally a gas, and it will dissolve in water, and, and so when you dissolve it in water, it's going to ionize and break apart like this. And so it's going to have these hydrogen ions. Acetic acid will do the same thing. Now, this is going to look really complex when I do this. And you'll actually learn more about this if you ever take chemistry. But what happens, again, is the same thing. This hydrogen will break off. And then this other whole mess of stuff, which is actually called acetate, is left behind, so this has a positive charge and this has a negative charge to it. But both of these acids are going to donate this proton to whatever else is going on in solution with it. So it's a proton donor. You could think of it as a hydrogen ion donor as well, okay? And finally, the last um, characteristic of acids that I want you to be able to remember is that there is a color change with indicators so that you would be able to tell whether it's an acid or whether it's a base. Um, there are a lot of different kinds of indicators and we're going to be exploring that as we get further into the chapter. Um, the easiest type of, of way to tell if you have an acid or a base is a lot of times they'll take a, an indicator and they soak paper in it. And there are two types of, of paper called, one's called a litmus paper, and it comes in the form of red litmus paper and blue litmus paper. And if you take blue litmus paper and you stick it down in an acid, and I think the picture that they showed you in your book, they actually had a piece of blue litmus paper and they kind of pushed it up against a lemon because we said lemon has acid in it, and that blue litmus paper actually turns red. So if you look at your book, you'll be able to see an example of blue litmus paper turning red in the presence of an acid. So there's lots and lots of different indicators. You're actually gonna do a lab later on where you're gonna see some of those indicators. But the one indicator that I want you to specifically remember is that blue litmus paper will turn red in the presence of an acid. And actually, that's why I used a red marker when I wrote this up here, because I remember that blue litmus paper turns red in the presence of an acid. Okay, so we've got five characteristics, a sour taste, uh, it reacts with metals, and when it does that, it actually forms hydrogen gas. It's, they conduct electricity, they are proton donors, and they change colors with indicators, and specifically with um, blue litmus paper, that blue litmus paper is going to turn red. So make sure that you know these five characteristics of acids, and tomorrow we will compare those with the characteristics of bases.